Welcome to Kiln IQ. Today's video is about dry and wet bulb probes on your kiln control system, as well as the checking and the maintenance of the probes. I often compare operating a kiln to flying a small aircraft. It is of the utmost importance that you understand and trust your controls and control elements. The controls are there to help you to achieve your goal. If you don't understand how they work, or you don't trust the information that it is presenting you with, the outcome will always be a disaster. One bad probe can affect the outcome. Let's analyze this graph and see what happens when one dry bulb probe starts giving a bad reading. This graph is from a double track softwood kiln with steam coils in the roof as well as between the two stacks. Each heating coil is controlled by the dry bulb probe that is measuring the air going into the stack. Let's look at the control lines while the kiln fans are blowing in the forward direction. The red and yellow lines are the respective controlling dry bulbs. Red is the controlling wall probe and its corresponding roof control valve is the purple line. The yellow line is the controlling center probe with the corresponding valve for the center heating coil is the olive line. As you can see, the probes are controlled close to set point in the fans forward direction with the steam valves modulating on a narrow band to keep the control good. The moment we change direction to the fans reverse direction, the faulty dry bulb with high reading on the entering side Force the roof coils to close to 0%. The reduction in energy caused the wet bulb to drop below set point, that's the green line, resulting in no venting taking place. At the same time, the center controlling dry bulb went down for a while and that caused the center control valve to open to 100% just to compensate. The net result was prolonged drying times and excessive degrade on the center heater side of one of the stacks and wetter boards on the outsides of both stacks. This was with one bad dry bulb probe that gave a five degree high reading. What if multiple probes go haywire? This graph shows a wet bulb running dry or showing high reading. Red is the dry bulb, Green is the wet bulb and blue is the relative humidity percentage according to the dry and the wet bulb reading. The black line is the wet bulb or the vent set point. So the moment the wet bulb temperature goes above vent set point, the kiln will start venting. The higher the wet bulb climbs, the more the kiln will want to vent. The more it vents, the more energy the dry bulb will be calling for to maintain temperature. Even though the incorrectly measured humidity show an increase, the true wet bulb reading and humidity is actually decreasing because the moisture is leaving the kiln through the open vents. The net effect is much harsher drying conditions inside the kiln, resulting in more quality downgrade. A wet bulb showing a high reading will overvent and dry quicker than planned aggravating kiln defects. Showing a low reading will result in little or no venting, slowing down the drying process and also possible quality downgrade. Apart from checking the probe accuracy, the wet bulb and the wet bulb tray itself also requires some TLC. More about this later in the video. To keep kilns running healthy, probes must be checked through the working temperature range and replaced if not accurate enough. A quick check is to stick a probe in your mouth and ask someone to check the temperature on the controls. If you're a healthy human being, it should be around 37 Celsius or about 99 Fahrenheit. In most cases, probe accuracy of 0.5 degrees is more than adequate for kiln operation. And today we are inside a kiln. I just want to check the accuracy of our wet and dry bulb probes. For obvious reasons, you need to know that you can trust your controls. Otherwise, you think you may be running at a certain EMC or um, temperature and, and you're way off. So what we're going to do, just to make sure my, my, my calibration equipment is, is good to go, I've, I 
I normally use a uh, laboratory grade mercury thermometer uh, that's accurate to 0.2 degrees Celsius and for easy reference and for easy reading I use a little uh, culinary thermometer uh, electronic or digital one so I would just check the accuracy of the culinary one with the with the digital one with the um, with the analog one and then I'll check the, the reading of the probe against the reading that this is okay so normally what I like to do is is to take a little thermo cup and put hot water into it uh, for the wet bulb that runs in this kiln um, I normally try to get the water to more or less the range that the wet bulb will be working in uh, in this case uh, it's about 57 Celsius I'm checking my my uh, small thermometer against the, the, the other one and the reason I'm doing this is because this thing is very difficult to read you're in a kiln and you're in the dark you can't always see it all right so we are at 56.7 Celsius here I'm looking at this one we are at 56.5 so to me that is accurate enough I know if we change it over to Fahrenheit now uh, it will be accurate enough for the test all right so so I've got the cup of hot water I've got my wet bulb probe I've got my culinary thermometer I'll put it in here it's measuring currently 129 129.3 so I'm going to phone the guy in the control room now just to confirm what the temperature is on this okay, we at the wet bulb we've just done the, the calibration check and we found that our our test probe and our actual probes were less than 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit apart which is to me accurate enough uh, we're just looking inside the wet bulb tray here if you can look inside you'll see it's not very clean now the problem is your with dirty water your wick will also soak up the dirty water and you'll get some of the dissolved solids that will accumulate on the wick, wet bulb wick and it will just dry out a lot quicker so part of your wet bulb maintenance would be to from time to time as required maybe once a week maybe once in two weeks it really depends on the operator and how vigilant they are just to clean it out properly make sure that sure there's no debris or mud or any funny things in the water and, and just clean it and of course also run the little valve to make sure that there's no um, particles or anything stuck inside it which will make sure it will cause the water level to go down and the wick to dry out a lot, a lot quicker and just the wet bulb position and in terms of where your wick is I personally like to keep my wick uh, between 30 and 40 millimeters above the water level um, that works for me some people may take it a bit higher the thing is the higher you are above the water level the better your chances are of your wick drying out quicker to summarize understand and trust your control system Check the probe's accuracy and replace suspect probes, and then maintain your wet bulb properly. Thank you for joining. Please keep your questions coming. Till next time, saw straight and dry flat.